We've all been there. You get to the beach, the wind is light, you rig your bigger sail, and as soon as you want to go on the water, the wind picks up. Obviously, you don't want to de-rig your sail and rig your smaller sail because time is limited and you're just too excited to get on the water. Or you don't even have a smaller sail. Either way, you're not getting around sailing overpowered from time to time. That's why today I want to show you how you can get more comfortable sailing overpowered and not be totally out of control. If you're new on this channel and you want to see more awesome windsurfing videos, take a second to subscribe and activate the notification bell. And now let's get into it. If you want to get better at handling overpower, I believe there are three areas to look at. Number one, body stability. Number two, gear tuning. And number three, technique. Let's start with body stability. That's something that will help you improve windsurfing in general. And obviously there are hundreds of ways to approach this. But core strength and leg stability are the key. These are three quick and easy exercises that help me a lot when handling overpower. Number one, balance on the gymnastic ball. The gymnastic ball is a great way to increase your core stability. The easiest to start is by giving yourself some support by placing your hands to the wall or floor. Try to bring up your legs and engage your core. The more you bend your legs, the easier it will be. But be sure not to make it too easy for yourself. The more advanced way would be to do it without support and in quite a straight position. Number two, squats on the BOSU ball or any unstable surface. The more unstable the surface, the harder this will be. If you're not used to working out, you can start with a pillow or a towel. The BOSU ball is the next step and it looks like a cut in half gymnastic ball and you can find it in most gyms. For the very advanced of you, you can go for one legged or pistol squats, which is my favorite exercise. Another idea is to balance on a gymnastic ball, but be careful as you can really injure yourself doing that. Last but not least, the heel slide. Grab anything that slides on your floor. Lay down on your back and bring up your hip by sliding the heels like so. If this is too hard for you, you can do it one legged and give some support with the other leg. And if this is too easy for you, you can just do it one leg with the other leg up. If you do these a couple of times a week, you'll see improvements really soon and it's great because you can even improve when you can't go on the water. Gear tuning. Your gear is obviously super important when it comes to control and you want to depower it as much as possible. But there's one common mistake a lot of people make. Obviously opening your leech by applying more downhole tension helps you get rid of some juice in your sail. So make sure to put as much as your sail brand suggests as maximum. But be aware that going beyond that will make you lose a constant pressure point and thus lose a lot of control, making it actually more physical and harder for you. I always say the formula for the gear is a perfect balance between all the components, so your gear doesn't have any weird tendencies. Most of the equipment in a lot of wind has the tendency of rearing. This is something you obviously don't want to happen. In order to avoid that, you can put your boom lower, move your base further forward, and even place the foot straps further forward. But also with these changes, it's an absolute balance game. If you overdo it, your board will stick to the water and it'll get really physical because the sail powers up and the board doesn't release. So beyond that, tightening your outhole will make the sail less powerful, thus making you gain control yet again, but overdoing it will make you lose a constant pressure point. What personally helps me the most is making the harness lines longer, which allows you to leverage your weight better and allows you to pull the harness lines further down as opposed to outside, which creates pressure on your base, keeping the nose from flying away. If you want to take it to the next level, you can tune your battens by making the tube part of the batten stiffer. So let's get into the technique. And by the way guys, for those of you who want to improve your skills in general and learn things like avoiding spin outs, gear tuning, going better up and downwind, improving your tags and jibes, the Surf Magazine and I put together an English PDF guide and you can download it for free. I'll put the link in the description. And that thing really has so much information and a lot of value. So like I said, it's free, link down below. So, when you're sailing overpowered, your technique has to adapt. Let me explain. So first of all, you need to put your ass down. And what I mean by that is, get some leverage on the sail, so it doesn't keep pulling you and make you open the sail involuntarily. Don't make the mistake to bring out your upper body too much, as that will make your windward rail lift, thus making you lose control. You want to keep enough weight on the heels, so the rail stays down. Another thing this posture allows you is to put more pressure on your mass base, keeping the nose from flying away. With the harness lines a little further forward, 
and your body leaning towards the nose, you can enhance this effect. Another thing to consider is the fin pressure. Many people tend to release too much fin pressure when being overpowered, when this will actually make you get pulled over and lose speed and control. So it's always good to keep the fin pressure steady, even if that means that you have to open your sail. With all this in mind, what's most important is that you see the gust coming so you can actually adjust your posture according to what is about to hit your sail. Okay guys, don't forget to keep trying and learning and I really hope you enjoyed and liked this tutorial. If you did, make sure to leave it a like under this video and help each other out in the comments.